So this is what we call the start center. It's essentially a dashboard and it comes in kind of three sections. And again, this is completely tailored to, to whichever user is logged in. The user that you're seeing uh, me logged in now is kind of the overriding admin user, so I have access to everything. But in the top right-hand quadrant, we're seeing that they've got this kind of chart analysis where we can actually look at, in this case, work orders reported by department. Uh, and we're looking at 2013, 2014 here. I can reduce it down just to the one year. I can click on a quarter and I can see on the right hand side the department uh, and how many jobs they've raised. Click on Q2, again gives me a, a view on the right hand side. This is useful just to see uh, spikes and, and troughs between different months. Uh, it could give you a, a kind of uh, an overview as to where there could be issues. Um, if you look at the chart types, we've got some things like uh, approved POs here, we've got a chart for, for that. I've got uh, issues by store. So from a store management perspective, you know, are you issuing more items in certain quarters than you were before? I can even look at a month by month basis. And back to the one I had before, which is the uh, work orders by department. So it's just a quick way of, of glancing your eye over over the, the way in which the system is showing you the data. And just because you know these are the charts that I'm showing now. Uh, we actually produce these on an ad hoc basis depending on what, what requirements you might have. So if you don't see something there that you think you would use, um, we can add it quite, quite simply. On the left hand side we've got what we call an inbox. Now the inbox is again are, are personalized and they're essentially there to enhance the, the transactional process to ensure that you're only seeing the information that you need to see. So as a manager, uh, an authorizing manager, it's likely you're going to be very busy. So you just need to see which things do I need to approve or reject uh, for my specific role. So we can see here that the user I'm logged in, there's, there's five purchase orders awaiting my specific approval. And that reduces that, that kind of data overload that I mentioned before, that kind of pain point that a lot of companies will have. And just by double clicking that, you know, it cuts through all of the thousands of transactions that you may have in the system and takes you just to the five that you need to deal with. So I can see here there's a purchase order and I can quite easily approve that. Oh, my supplies in balance. But I can approve that and then move through the rest of the process. So the system is kind of tailored to show you only the information that's relevant to you. Uh, and it kind of cuts, like I said before, the departmental gap. So just because I'm in procurement doesn't mean that I can't view information about jobs and work orders or how many stock items have been transferred in the last month. And it, say, it will save me from having to chase specific individuals because everything is in, within the same system. At the bottom you've got what we call the KPIs, the Key Performance Indicators, uh, and this is just an example selection uh, of ones that we've done uh, for other clients and ones that we know are kind of industry standard, so things like the percentage of uh, corrective maintenance to preventative maintenance jobs, and you'd hope that this number was, was fairly low because corrective maintenance jobs were, you know, more expensive than planned maintenance. Um, so this would be a, a very big indicator that something was wrong and you could start digging into why you're undertaking so much corrective maintenance. Um, here's just a simple kind of uh, spend against all the sites and we can drill down in this KPI and, and we can see on a site by site basis how much is being spent. So we can see here site delta is spending more than the other site. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I guess it depends on um, the kind of things that you're, you're reporting upon, but again, very quickly we can see where issues may be coming from. Going back here, we'll then take you back to my, my KPIs. Uh, average mean time between failure, I'll be drilling into that a bit later to show you how to how we can find issues uh, specifically within the data. Uh, we're using kind of different images and stuff here, so here we can see actually a picture of a motor, um, and again, this is just an image that we pulled ourselves, but if you've got company specific images they can become part of your own dashboard and just scrolling down you'll see that I've got quite a few different uh, key performance indicators within here and again you know, there's a fleet related one showing that uh, trucks out of commission but things on a, from a procurement angle uh, average supplier lead time would be a useful one and again that kind of drill down functionality and we could drill down as far as we wanted to so it's quite it's quite a powerful tool but ultimately the the key performance indicators that are drawing our eye to, to problems that we might have within the business somewhere. 
So that's a brief overview of the kind of dashboard to start centre. Uh, and like I said, this is completely tailored to a role or user basis. So you can obviously hide certain key performance indicators and show them depending on what, what your role is. So just take you through a quick scenario. So as I said, the dashboard is kind of the start point for everything. And, and the way in which we, we at Sapphire would implement the system is to make sure that there's no real need to navigate the menus. Everything you need will be here on this on this dashboard. So you'll be able to see something's wrong and quickly move through, or you'll be able to see that you need to approve something and quickly move to that record from this screen and filter out everything that you don't need to see. So if you concentrate on this average uh, mean time between failure statistic here, and if I drill into that, um, perhaps as a manager, I can see that I've got three different categories of, of items, motors, uh, piping, and, and pumps. And I can quickly see that the mean time between failure for pumps, uh, that they're breaking down more frequently than everything else. So there could be an interesting reason as to why that's happening, and we may want to resolve it. So if I double click my pumps, what that's going to do is going to take me to uh, a list view that we've just seen before of all my pumps. That's the particular record there. And if I look at the list view, I can start to look at which one's actually breaking down most frequently. So on the right-hand side, I've got a mean time between failures on an asset by asset basis. And if I click on that like I did before for the commission date, I can actually see that this asset here at the top, this centrifugal pump, is breaking down on average every 17 days, uh, which is significantly not a good thing. So if I click on that, I'm able perhaps to start interrogating as to why that's happening all through the data in the system. So just looking at the header, you know, we can see an image of it nicely down here. There's information about the, the equipment itself. I can see that it's assigned to a particular engineer. So perhaps I want to look at this engineer and see if it's perhaps a training issue that know this is breaking down so frequently so double clicking that can take me to the engineer record I can see that he was hired you know, quite recently um, is that perhaps an issue maybe it's a training issue but on his comments I can see that he's passed his review um, I'm actually able to review any qualifications that he has in the system so I can see that you know he's got a mechanical engineering degree uh, he's got particular other qualifications so you know this could be the issue uh, we may want to, to delve deeper into this, but realistically, it probably seems as if it maybe isn't a training issue in this case. Uh, in terms of this asset, I'm able to look at other information, so I can actually see the event history against it as well. So on that tab there, still within the asset, very simply, I can see all the jobs that were produced against it. So you know, it's not giving me a great deal of information, but I'm beginning to see, okay, there are a frequent amount of jobs being raised against this. I can see the costs that have been raised against it, so I can see that the overall cost has been over £2,000 uh, spent against this asset. But still no closer to understanding as to why perhaps it's breaking down so frequently. So again, on the right hand side, just because these tabs are available at the top doesn't mean I can't see a lot more information about this, so I can actually look at things like other meter readings against it, um, any purchase orders that have been raised against it, permits to work, safety against it any warranties, um, but let's have a look at the work order repair cost chart, which will give me a breakdown as to exactly how we're, the kind of costs are going against this. Very quickly I can see that 94% of the spend against this particular asset has been stocked items. So it's, it's probably something to do with the fact that maybe we're putting the wrong parts on there uh, and as to why it's breaking down so frequently. So if I start jumping into the actual jobs themselves, so if I look at this pump failure job here, I can then actually see the work order record against it. Uh, and I can see the details about this, who, who did the work, how long it took, uh, any comments against it. And I can very quickly see that the manufacturer part was unavailable in this case, so we used a substitute part. That could perhaps be a reason as to why it's failing so often. Having a look at another one, again, different job different pieces of information against that. If I click at the comments again, so I'm seeing a very similar note here, the manufacturer's casket was not available at the time of repair, so a substitute part was used. So it's, it's quite clear that perhaps this asset is breaking down so frequently 
because we're using a substitute part. So perhaps it's, it's time to maybe replace the asset because we're not able to get parts for that anymore um, because then it maybe will stop breaking down so frequently. But all within the system, within a couple of minutes, we've been able to ascertain as to why perhaps this item is breaking down more frequently. And, and that's kind of concentrating on the pain point that I mentioned earlier. So we're trying to reduce the high levels of, of reactive maintenance. So perhaps by replacing this with a, a different manufacturer's pump, where we could get spare parts, we reduce the maintenance upon it, uh, and we've very easily been able to find the kind of issues um, around that. And that's just one example of how you might do that, but all the information you have about an asset is all stored against that asset itself, so you haven't got to navigate around the system at all. It's just all there, and you're able to kind of interrogate it all within one screen. And that was brought to you all because of the kind of key performance indicator on the front, and we're able to drill down very quickly uh, to find that issue. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to take you into the, the part screen and just show you uh, how easy it is to configure the system yourself. So talking about this flexibility and, and scalability of the system, you know, once Sapphire have implemented the system for you, you know, you'll be able to move forward with it yourself without having to rely upon consultancy or services uh, from ourselves or anyone else because the system is so simple to use that you can effectively take it forward yourselves. So a very familiar looking screen, but this time I'm looking at actually the, uh, a material from one of our stores, uh, a valve. And this little button up here, the screen designer, just allows me to very, very quickly and very easily start to configure the screen itself. So let's say I want to add a new field in, in here um, to start showing the class what color this valve is, for example, or any particular item is. As you see down here, you've got a whole host of extra fields that are available to, to hold any number of information that we want. And if I right mouse click this use to find field two, I can edit the name. Let's call it color. I can drag it up to anywhere that I want to. So let's put it under category here. I can essentially make it a required field, so a mandatory field, ensuring that every time a new record is created that somebody has to fill this field in. I can even give it a validated lookup list as well. So rather than having a free text, I can say that you have to put in uh, red or blue, for example, here, let's say. So if I put a lookup value of red, blue, save that, so if I then save my screen design there and then just exit my screen designer mode, now within a minute I've actually added an extra field that's now mandatory gives me a validated lookup. So, you know, there's no reliance upon having to call somebody to add new fields or to change a process in any way. Very simply, as the user, you're able to actually amend how the system looks and feels for, for, your, for your users at any given time.